Good, Good evening. evening, everyone. Yes, welcome to the family room. We are so glad that you're here with us tonight. We hope you've had a great day today. And as the month of August is winding down, Man. I'm telling you, it's going to be fall before we know it. I love the season changes. I love, you? I love I fall. I, I do. I hope it stays that way for a while. I like these. 80 degree days and 60 degree mornings. Oh yeah, it's Beautiful. awesome. Well, we are so glad that you joined us. We hope you just take a breath from your busy day today and relax as we're gonna talk about the scriptures. We're gonna talk about established in grace. And Terry, tonight we're gonna to talk about that grace is for the here and now. Wow. That God wants a, the favor of God and his love for us that he has um, had for us before time began. We're going to talk about that tonight and remind ourselves about that, that he wants us to affect the way we live our everyday lives. He wants it so, to affect now. So Robin, you're saying, see, I grew up in, in thinking that grace was just to get you to heaven. Yeah. And, I, and the absolutely. reality is, I don't know how much we're going to get to tonight, but Jesus never, the disciples never preached a message about getting to heaven. They, they preached a message where heaven would operate out of us yeah. the right kingdom, here the kingdom, of god, the kingdom would, of god god would yeah. come and and yeah. impact our world here right i mean god wants grace the the favor of god and the grace of god to help us experience a better life absolutely he, he wants us to experience some heaven yeah. on earth yeah absolutely he does well last week we talked about what did we talk about we talked about we talked about the fact that god wasn't angry no, and we, we kind of slipped grace in there and connected oh, those man. two because remember we're talking about our journey terry yeah we're talking about how we became established in grace. And I think it's a great time to read our scripture that we open up with. And because this is our journey and the things that we had to get a hold of and, right. the, and the truths that really changed everything for us. And right. it was progressive. And so we're kind of talking about some of the things in the very beginning that well, really began to change. Robin, how we looked here's, at God. here's the deal. If we say it's progressive, God doesn't change. No, he doesn't. But, and we're going to read that here. But our second. understanding and our enlightenment yes, continually change. Like, yes. Like it says in Ephesians 3, that there's heights and depths yeah. and breadths and lengths of his love. Well, there, right. there's levels of grace. And I'm sure that we're probably just scratching the oh, surface gonna, right now. You know what, Terry? I expect to understand <laughs> the truth and the word of God and the love of God and, and to understand the scriptures in a, a more deeper way and, to, and my relationship with God in a more in-depth way. Right. A year from now, six months from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. And, and Robin, you know, I talk about this all the time. Here's my thought is that I don't want to just talk about it or or grow in the depths of it. I want to experience it. I want it to be uh, working in my life. Philemon, yeah. Philemon verse six says, right. through the acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you, in, in Christ, Christ, that your yes. faith may become effectual or working. In other words, I don't want to just talk about this stuff. I don't want to, pr I, I do want to talk <laughs> about it, it to work. I, but I want it to work yeah. in people's lives. Oh yeah. You know? And I think one of the things that we did back in 1987, when we really began to search is we became open. Right. To yeah. and willing to look at things outside of what we'd already been taught, yeah. and it's not that we were that, not that we were walking away from oh, our no. foundation because, but we, but I think sometimes we think, well, we know know everything. There's nothing more to know about God, and I think when we get in that place, then we're we're going to get stuck, right. and we're going to probably end up not being able to really move forward in our relationship with God and really not have things work effectively, man. But we began to be open to look at things differently. Right. And that's Robin, I never even up until just a few years ago, I never even heard the term deconstruction, you know, but there's a lot of people that throw that terminology yeah. around and, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. But but we've been deconstructing our whole married life. Yeah. We've we really been have. deconstructing, but whenever we whenever we see something different, we don't throw everything that we've learned no, out. No. No. We we just we begin to adjust. let God adjust us. Yeah. If the truth is the truth, then if I question the truth, it'll still be, be the, the truth, truth after I get done questioning it. And I think that is the thing. And I know we use this word almost every week, but I still think it's such a great word and it's safe. I think that we are <laughs> safe to question things. And I think that is the thing that we really want to encourage you to do right. is to feel safe and secure in, in the love of God right. and the favor of God, right. that it's okay to question what we believe or ask ourselves why, or if something doesn't seem to line up together, that 
we are asking the questions um, of why. Yeah. Why have I always believed it like this? Is this really the truth? And we, were we interpreting it the right way? Right. Because what you and I have been talking about is that we have to measure everything against Jesus. Right. And so, so that's what we're going to do here again tonight is, yeah. is measure uh, what we're saying up against Jesus. Yeah. So, that's good. so, so here we go. Yeah. Let me read uh, Hebrews 13, eight and nine it says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines for it is good that the heart be established or stabilized yeah. by grace, not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. So any of the Old Testament stuff, people that were occupied with performance and all those oh kinds goodness. of things, it it never, it, it says here that it, it didn't profit them. So why would we think it would be profiting to us? So, so I want to, I want to, uh, give us uh, a couple of definitions again of grace. Yeah. Grace is the favor of God, especially the divine influence of God upon a heart or a mind. My definition for 30 years has been this. Grace is God's ability and his willingness to use his ability on our behalf, despite our performance, because grace, as we've been yeah. talking about, took place before the foundations of the world or before the fall of Adam, didn't have anything to do with us. And so, and that truth right there set us free. Oh, it set did. our minds free. That to to realize that my performance doesn't change how God looks at us. Absolutely, and man, that was liberating. That took such pressure off of us because if we're honest with ourselves, our performance doesn't always measure up. And and man, when we know that God loves us and that I don't have to like work my way back up into <laughs> God's favor again, I'm going to turn to God for help right. when I need it. And I'm telling you, I love that scripture that says that, that to come boldly into the throne of grace Ooh. to find help in our yeah. time of need. Right. I mean, that's when, and, but you can only come boldly into the throne of grace. If you believe you're always faithful. But I love that. Think about that. Boldly into the throne of favor. Yeah. You're going to come into the throne right. of And favor. it's not that we go somewhere. It's right here. It's, no, it's right, right it's within inside. us. Yes. It's the divine influence of God upon our own life. Man, and I our just, own oh, that is so good. So, so we start, we talked about God not being angry. So we're going to jump dang. back in there again to take us to where we're going tonight. So we want to, um, I want to read out of Luke chapter nine, uh, verses 51 through 56, very familiar. And then Robin, you can jump in. This is actually... Luke 9 is actually talking about uh, the passage out of 2 Kings chapter 1, and we're not going to go back there and read that. We right. make, I want to make mention of it so you can go back and read it. Yeah. And I want you to look at the, at the, the non-congruency of Luke 9 and 2 yeah. Kings chapter 1. Well, how Jesus, how how Jesus, Jesus corrected, corrected what yeah. happened in the Old Testament in the, in the Gospels. Yeah, so here right. we go. Now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up that he set Jesus, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not, the Samaritans did not receive Jesus. They didn't, they, they rejected him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. Now there's a lot of things that we could talk about that this was, uh, you know, th this was uh, these guys rejecting Jesus because the Samaritans and the Jews didn't get along no. and Jesus was heading to, to Jerusalem. Yeah. There's more to it than that, but I I'll leave it at that. Um, goes on to say, and when his disciples, James and John saw this, saw this rejection, Lord, yeah. they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? So they were, they were referencing second Kings chapter one. They were ready to call fire down and listen in the ministry of Jesus. He walked on water and raised the dead. They, they thought they could call fire down out <laughs> of heaven. They knew they could have. Well, been Elijah did it well, in the yeah. Old Testament, so why couldn't we do it? Yeah. So hang with me here. But he turned, Jesus turned and rebuked them and it. said, you do not know what manner of spirit or what attitude that you're of. What's flowing out of you is, is not from me. For the son of man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And then they went to another 
Village. Oh my gosh. You know, Terry, we have con <laughs> such a contaminated concept of Whoa. God. Wow. I mean, because of our mistaken identity, because we have it and because we've mistaken the, what God the identity like, of God. Yes. Because they thought just like here, they thought he was angry and that he thought that God would want to like, you know, call some fire down out right. of heaven because they'd rejected him. But we thought Jesus was saving us from an angry God. But the truth is Jesus was saving us from our perception of, of God, God being, being angry. angry because they wanted to reduplicate something oh, yeah. that was in their scriptures. The new Testament wasn't written yet. They were writing it by their actions. And then later on the, the, all the scriptures were going to be written. So they were talking about second Kings chapter one. They were emulating an old Testament prophet who was angry and mad at a lesser problem if you go back and read it this was a bigger problem that the samaritans were rejecting jesus but even though they were rejecting him in this moment that was jesus not didn't reject reaction. them no. that wasn't no. that wasn't the father's reaction because that wasn't jesus reaction no because as we as we're going to read some <laughs> scriptures further he's picked us out and chose everyone everyone not just the jews he chose everyone before time began yeah and and as we've been talking about the 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 um the Old Testament prophets and those that lived there, they had glimpses of God. They loved right. God and they had glimpses of what God was like, but it's evident. They were that, messed up in their yeah, mind they and they wrote not, their journey down. Right, And they did not have a clear picture of I, what God was really like. Uh, you know, I'm going to say this and, and I don't have, there's lots of things we could talk about. For most of my life, I read the Bible on a just a flat reading, like I would everything take was equal. everything was equal, but it's very evident here. And Jesus and the disciples did that all through the New Testament. They rewrote the Old Testament, just like Jesus said, you have heard, you know, uh, that, you know, to hurt your enemies. I can't think of how it goes. So uh, he talked about that they wanted us to have vengeance. On, right. On your You've heard that it, that it was okay to kill your enemies, but I tell you to love your enemies. Right. There you, so, go. So, there you go. So there was a lot of changes going on in, in the ministry of Jesus, and he was trying to change people's perception. Because he came to save us, not from an angry God, but he came to perception. save us from our perception and from the fact that we were angry because oh of our goodness. perception. Yes, because look, the, we, when you think God's angry at you, then you're not even going to feel good about yourself. You're right. going to be angry at yourself, and then you're going to be angry at everybody else who you don't think is living. So, Robin, right. this, and we've been talking about this a lot the last two or three days, is that grace is for the here and now. Yeah. Grace favor. was in the middle of he this moment. He was showing moment, grace right there. He was showing favor, favor to toward the Samaritans. the Samaritans, even though we were, they were rejecting him in that moment. But look what he did through the whole time he was on the earth. He just kept showing favor to people that under the law, under the Mosaic law, right. shouldn't have even been accepted or right. treated fair. They should have been stoned. And, that, and Jesus kept showing favor, kept showing forgiveness, kept showing love, kept showing mercy. And because that has always been the heart of the Father. Absolutely. I love what John three seventeen says, such a familiar passage, but right. it so clearly says it here. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And what were we going to be saved? We were going to be saved from our wrong perception. Yeah, of because God. we're going to read some scriptures here that we were saved by grace before, before the, time began. Oh my goodness. We by his purpose and his yeah. holy calling, we were saved. So yeah. this saved here, uh God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This saved was we were being saved in our mind again from our perceptions and all of the things that we because have Because God wants us to experience grace here and, and now. now. He right. wants to, you and me and you to experience the favor of God right here, right now in our lives. Okay, Robin. So this word saved is the word sozo. Right. Uh, it could be soteria. There's a few different uh, different readings, but they basically all mean the same. It means to save, that is to deliver or to protect, okay. to heal. You don't need healing whenever you get to heaven, whenever whenever you get into the spirit realm, whenever you lay down your physical body here, you don't need healing there. You need healing right now. All of these things or are talking now. about for now. now. So to deliver or to protect, to heal, to preserve, to save self, <laughs> <laughs> That's good. to save do well, needs. to be or make whole, to rescue from danger or destruction. And, and in the New Testament, 
that word sozo is used about 120 times. Oh my gosh. I mean, right there, God's trying to get a point across to us right. that, that he came to bring life to the here and now. And it starts with understanding grace. It starts yeah. with establishing our hearts and grace, leaving the fact that it has anything to do with our performance, that we can never be separated, that there's nothing, it's not new. Right. And yeah. it's been before time began and we're getting ready. We're going to read that scripture. It's so good. Which Second is sec Timothy, Yeah. You just can't not read it. Go ahead and read Second it. Second Timothy 1, a 9 through 10 says, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works. There it I is. I love that. But according to his own purpose. That is what I love so much. That so clearly shows it has nothing to do with us. Robin, that it was his purpose that he saved us. In Ephesians 1, it said that he wanted, and it says it multiple times in the scriptures, but he wanted to do the good pleasure of his will. Oh, I know. That way that we would favorite. all be in, yes. not out. Yes. And, and he loved us so much. The end was going to have nothing to do with us. <laughs> or the out could have nothing to do but with us. But see, most of my life, I preach people out. I had to preach them out before I preached them in. I know. And isn't it good news that we don't have to tell someone yes. that they Lord. have to, that God didn't, that they, that they were fallen or separated from God. We could tell them that they've never been separated. Oh, I tell you, this brings joy to my heart. Oh my I, goodness. So let's keep reading. Okay. And grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. There it is. He hooked who has saved us and called us with a holy calling to before time, time began. began. When did he do it? He did it before time began. And well, let, keep, keep and, going. And Jesus came so we could experience it in the here and now. I mean, it's always been there, but right. there was such a mistaken um, identity that we had for ourselves. We so misunderstood what the Father God was like, right. and then therefore we couldn't understand what ourselves like. Right. That we couldn't experience it. That yes. we, the people of that day were not experiencing. Man, Jesus was like a fresh wind that blew yeah. in, that started treating people in a way that they had were were totally not used to being treated like that. Well, one of my favorite scriptures out of the Message Bible, it says that uh, talking about the unforced rhythms of grace, yeah. Jesus said, come get away with me. Oh, Man, who yeah. they Take were under bread. such law oh, and bondage. And but the truth is, Robin, so all of us have been too. Oh my too. gosh, we just want to fall right back up underneath that. Yeah. It's so easy to, we live in such a performance-based society. Yeah. It's so easy to translate that into our relationship with God. And the truth is, is when we understand that God's grace is for the here and now, and we can let that bring rest and relief to our lives our everyday lives, yeah. then we can really take a, be able to take a break from the, everything around us that's performance. Right. I mean, it helps us walk this journey out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It does. So, yeah. so, and it goes on to say, and I won't read the whole thing, but it says, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, so good. see, he came to unveil it to us yes. of what was always true yeah. of us. And yeah. uh, so go ahead. Yeah. So you know what, Terry, grace just did not just begin at the cross because God's anger was finally satisfied. I yeah. mean, we talked about that last week, that yeah. God not being angry. We thought for the longest time, we thought that the cross was where Jesus took all of our punishment and that that fine, that God took all his anger out on Jesus so he wouldn't have to take it out on us. But the truth is that he's never been angry angry at us. Yeah. He has never been mad. He's always, there's the Romans chapter eight says there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And so Robin, heaven, what we've talked about heaven, we've thought a lot about this word saved was about going to heaven. And the but truth is, now. the truth is if we be, really begin to understand this, uh, that heaven was in the bank for everybody before this ever began. Yeah. Now you can call me crazy, and I preached a lot of other stuff most of my life, but I'm embracing this because I see it. I can't unsee it. And, and this it. is what establishing your heart in grace will do. Yes. I mean, and it's a journey. I don't know where you're at on your journey, right. but it is a journey. As you begin to really believe and focus on the fact that God favors you and that he loves you and that it's not about your performance and you begin to look at what Jesus yeah. thought and you begin to look at all the scriptures that Jesus and um, G where Jesus demonstrated um, the true heart of the father yeah. where you see these scriptures where he corrected the disciples um, clearly yeah. clearly saying that the anger I didn't come to destroy no, people and that what Elijah operated in in that moment was not the heart of the so, father so Robin let's talk about this whenever you said that this uh, just came up in my mind is that if Jesus didn't come to destroy men's lives, but to save them in his lifetime, then our future isn't full of God or Jesus destroying the earth and getting rid of the planet. 
but it's establishing the kingdom of God. What, what Jesus was trying to do with his disciples and us is to establish the kingdom of God in our moment so that grace is working. But we're never going to establish, let the kingdom be established in us if we don't believe we're favored. There you if go. If we don't allow our heart to be established in grace, because the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the things that we see him modeling, then that's how he is now. Exactly. And that's how he wants us to, he wants to, us to embrace the favor of God so we can let that man pour out in our everyday life. Because lives. again, Robin, grace is empowerment to do what you could not do on your own. Yeah. Jesus was empowered and he said, you guys are empowered just like I am. If you'll yeah. embrace it, if you'll receive it. Right. So let me read out of Ephesians here. And I know we kind of have come back to this a, a yeah. number of times, yeah. but I want to read it again. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even whenever we were dead in our sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by, and dead in our sins, again, what was, what we did We were that? dead in our wrong identity. Yes. Is we, what we were, we were in. In, in our actions produced uh, the thought that we were separated. Yes. So, uh, hath quickened us together with Christ. And in this verse, it says, by grace, you are saved. Yeah. And then it says, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. When did he do that? Before, Before time, time began. began. So that in the yeah. ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his favor, his yeah. grace in his kindness. I love that. Not destroying people. <laughs> not what James and John were trying no, to do. But that's what a lot of us have been like. Well, it's what we want to destroy people who aren't like us and we want to we want to destroy things so that everything's okay for us. But but we don't have to destroy things. Jesus said there's a there's a better way and the better way is love. And if we're if we find ourselves struggling with anger, I think we really have to ask ourselves you know, what do we believe? Do we believe God is angry? Right. And, and, and then does that just make us angry at ourselves for all the things that we fall short in? Absolutely. And then, then all we then can do is because we're walking in this place of anger is express anger toward other people. Yeah. 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 But God so, is not angry. No. So it goes on to say, for by grace you, are you saved through faith. And we've already, we've been seeing that, no, not about, uh, that it's not about our yeah, works. No. It, it's, it's not even about us believing in this scripture. It says by grace, are you saved through faith? It's and true. that, listen to this, and that not of yourselves. And that's it talking is about the gift faith. Of, it is the, that's talking the about faith. faith itself it was the, the faith of God. of God that saved us before time began. Oh my then he revealed it in his son, in his life, death, burial, resurrection, ascension, seating, and, and showing us the reality of that. Isn't that pretty exciting to think that God had faith in us? Oh my he, gosh. Even though he knew that we were going to believe a lie and that we were going to walk in a mistaken identity. And even though he knows that we still, every day, because we talk about this, every day we have to choose to believe the truth. Right. Uh, what, No matter what I believe, it doesn't change the truth. Right. But I, and I have to embrace it right. for the, to impact my right. here and now. Right. I have and to embrace yes. grace and yeah. favor. But see, we thought we had to have faith in his grace so that we could go to heaven. Well, and then if, and then if I was struggling, it was because I didn't have enough faith. There you go. Well, well, and there it says clearly that it was his faith. It was, the faith wasn't even of us. It was his faith. It was the fact that he had faith in us. And I love because he has the ages to come to show to us, show us this. Yeah. So that eventually, at some point in eternity, I'm going to embrace this at some point. See, Robin, it goes on to say, by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves, read the scripture, it is the gift, gift of God. God. If you had to do something, it wouldn't be a gift. I would and you say, it. well, you have to receive the gift. I agree with the fact that you have to um, embrace it, but there's nothing that you have to do to become it. You are it. Yes. And so if you know you are it, then you can embrace yeah. it. Like Terry, if I give you my cell phone and, and I say, here's your gift. And you might not ever use that cell phone. I'm giving that to you. I, I, I'm letting you own it. And you can choose to use it or not. And you could just let leave it and let let the battery go dead. You could or you could or you could choose to pick it up and use it and have the benefits okay. of it in your life. So Robin, before time began, God gave me the gift. He gave us then the he gift. revealed that he gave me the gift in Jesus. Right, because because mankind had so wow. misunderstood what his intent was. Because wow. they had believed that they had to do something to get the gift. 
yeah. to be like God, yeah. to be favored. So again, it says, by grace, are you saved? And there's that word saved again. That word sozo means to save, that is to deliver, or to protect, to heal, to preserve, to save self. Now, we're not saying that there's not a heaven. I believe that yeah. heaven, heaven is a lot closer than what you think it is. Heaven is definitely a lot closer than what I thought it was. Heaven is in us. Heaven is all around us. Yes. We are surrounded, Hebrews says, by so great a cloud of witnesses. I believe heaven is uh, one breath away. Oh, if you yeah. take your last breath, boom, you're in the realm of the spirit. Yep. So yep. Uh, this goes on to say, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained before the foundations of the world that we should walk in them. Yeah. And again, <clears throat> the good works aren't, I mean, God's not angry at us if we're struggling with our identity still. Right. We're struggling, embracing this. And, you know, God only cares about our performance because it impacts the quality of our life. Absolutely. And, and God, because God wants to impact the quality of my life here and, and now. now grace the favor of god is for the here and for the now he wants your life to be different he wants my life i told and terry and i've talked about this is i mean we want this to be more than theology we yes. want this to be something that's mm. impacting. experiential i want this to impact my family yeah i want this to impact the way i mother my children the way i treat my grandchildren the kind of boss i am at work i want it to impact every, every area relationship. Of life. see robin i think most of our problem is has been in my own eyes and and what I've seen is most of our problem has been the fact that um, most people are trying to get out of here, especially with everything that's going on yeah. in the world in 2020, you know, uh, but my vision has increased in 2020 is that there's something that I know that that I see that we need to tell people we need to do what we're going to read here as we end today, uh, you know, about reconciliation. Um, we need to preach and tell people that they're oh in, that they've got the gift. Now, receive it with your mind. Embrace it. Believe it, that, yeah. it, that it's yours, yeah. that it's been yours all along. Wow, that is so good. He so, wants us to be a fact into the here now. You know, God came to declare peace in our minds. I yeah, think about you know, yeah. he, in that reconciliation. He's reconciling us back to our original identity. Right. To reconcile us back to the right view of himself. Right. So that we could see ourselves the right, right. way. And, and that brings such peace. It does. In our mind and emotions. God came on the scene himself. I love it. I mean, <laughs> he'd been working for thousands of years trying to get 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 through. So he and, came as one of us to yeah, try to get I through to that. us. And then we it. killed him. I know. And he still wasn't mad. And he's mad. still not he said, mad. Father, forgive them. They don't even know what you do. He still demonstrated his retaliation was not to call fire down out of heaven. No, well, it was it not. It was not. And man, if there was ever a time that he could It would have been whenever he was on the cross. He could have called 10, I think the scripture says... 10,000 legions of angels, maybe. Oh my goodness, you know? yes. But so he came on the scene himself to resolve the misunderstanding. I love it. <laughs> to declare the love and to declare that he was not angry and to reveal the true heart of the Father. And I am telling you what, and to reconcile us in our own minds right. back to him. Back because to he him. didn't need reconciled to us. He had yeah. changed. So I, we definitely didn't get all the way to where we wanted to go, but, but let me read this scripture as we're ending today. And we talked a little bit about it last week and we'll get it. Yeah. We'll get back in here next week. Second Corinthians five seventeen through 21 says, therefore, since everyone is in Christ, he is a new creation creation. All old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that's the way we're thinking. That's yes. talking about our mindset because we weren't dead no. in our spirits no. to God. We, were we weren't alive. separated we weren't from God. Separated from God. So it goes on to say, now all things are of God who has reconciled, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of peace, the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah, that is that God was in Christ. Where was God at? Was he angry? Was he turning his back on Jesus? No, he was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not holding our trespasses or our sins against us yeah. because he saved us before time began. He forgave us before yeah. time began. And so he wanted to reveal it in the life of Jesus and oh, man, at the cross. Then it goes on to say, He's committed up to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, 
today, Robin, you and I are ambassadors for Christ as though we were, as though God were pleading through us because he's in us. Yeah. So he is. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. In other words, you are reconciled. You have always had the gift. You entered yes. the earth with the gift, but if you don't know it, you're not going to use it. You're not going to use it. And if you think it's about you performing, being good enough, oh even goodness. even most Christians don't don't even know whether or not they're going to heaven or not well, because yeah. they think that part. You know, I better live right, or God won't. No, if you don't live the way that you should, your life is going to be a disaster here in this moment. And God doesn't want that. But he's not leaving you. No. He is not leaving you. He said he will never leave you. Never forsake, forsake you. you. That, that there's yeah. nothing that can separate you from him. Yeah. And the love that he demonstrated in Christ is the same love he's had for us from the beginning of time. Yeah. And there's nothing that can separate us from that. So Robin, grace is for here and now. It's for the here and now. Believe that. Yes. I know we're talking about favor and you think, oh, well, yeah, it's good to be favored. But man, God wants you to know that he is loves you and you are favored and that you're okay. He wants you to feel good about yeah. yourself because he feels good about you. He loves you. He doesn't look at you when you mess up and think, oh my gosh, what is wrong with you? Right. He looks at me and said, that's my kid. Oh man, they're not operating in the truth right now, but Ah, the Holy Spirit just comes and, and God begins to speak to us that we're favored, that we're loved, that we're accepted, that we're chosen, beginning to remind us of who we right. are. That's how he brings correction. Robin, I love, the, I love the song that Davey uh, sings at church uh, about uh, that God will uh, tear down every lie. Oh, yeah, He'll the reckless climb. love of God. Yeah, the reckless love he, of God. There's no mountain he won't climb up, no lie he won't tear down. I mean, I love that. Yeah. That is what he's doing. His yes. love is so reckless. And that's what he's us. been doing to us our whole life. We're yeah. living in a in a time of correction, and correction is not bad. Correction brings life to us. I thought when I would hear those words, and you and I talk about this, we've had such negative associations with correction because right. we just thought it was we thought it was an angry God. Yes, because we saw God God angry, and maybe our parents corrected us from that place of anger. Right. So every even physical example we have a correction is so negative, it's so degrading. And it is not. God's correction is to, to remind us of who we are and to yeah. remind us that we are loved, that we are favored, reminding us that we need to have our hearts established in, in grace. the grace. Oh and Robin, goodness. that empowers us in our everyday walking yes. around, living out. And man, life. he wants you to be empowered <laughs> this week every day that God loves you. So if you're struggling, if you're up against something that's difficult this week, remember you are favored. Yes, you, you are. You are loved. It's for the here and now. There's not one single thing you have to do to be favored. You will never be more favored than you are, are right now. There's nothing that you can do to ever separate you from the favor of God. So walk in it. Why Absolutely. Don't, why don't we just believe that it's true yeah, and walk in it. And, and watch God flow out of and, us and like he never has before. And see how it changes. To preserve, attitude. to protect, to heal. Oh my gosh. The out of your belly will flow see rivers of changes. living water. Oh my, see how it changes the way you parent. See how it changes the way you love your spouse right. and to love your family. Right. How, how, how easy, much easier it is to get along with someone who's difficult at work when you realize you're favored and they're actually favored right. too. And, and maybe if you, get, you treat them like that, oh maybe it will change their life. And it begins to melt away the anger that we can operate <laughs> in sometimes. Oh my gosh, that's such a, I don't know about you, but to not operate in a place of anger feels really good. It does. To operate in some peace. Yeah. So let does. the unforced rhythms of grace operate Affect in your you. life this yes. week. We <laughs> love you so much and we think you're awesome and you are favored. You are favored. You have a great day. See you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.